lesson 70, talk, we will be able to describe and use talk. Now, talk is a new sort of idea here. Now, I wanted to try and leave all of the rotational physics stuff to year 12. But unfortunately, the gods at the VCA have said, talk is something that you guys should learn. So I'm going to teach you rotational force, which is essentially what talk is. Um, this is not related to impulse and it's not related to momentum. This is its own brand new sort of thing. If anything, it's probably most best related to Newton's second law, um, F equals MA. It's sort of more closely related to that. Well, let's talk about torque. What is torque? Now, not all forces lead to linear motion. Some forces can lead to rotational motion. Now, rotational motion is still, uh, like, it's still motion. You can even still get, technically, it's also acceleration because you're changing your velocity, but you're just doing it at a, by changing the direction, not by changing the speed. So, but in this case, not everything just works in a straight way. Torque is a measure, is a measure of rotational force. It's like saying, how much twisting force there is. That's the best way that I think that, that, I've, seen to, that I've seen to describe it. If you can twist, like, like, it's like comparing, like, okay, how much force does it take? Like, how hard is it to twist a doorknob compared to opening a jar of pickles? One of them, the pickle jar is actually, versus how much force is it to uh, tighten or untighten a bolt? Bolts, you can't untighten with your hands. Pickle jars can be, you can untie them with your hands, but they require a fair bit more effort. Whereas opening and closing the door by twisting it should be um, pretty easy to do. So um, that's, and those difficulties of turning, that twisting force that you need to apply can be thought of as torque. Torque is, and this is a T, but it's a Greek letter T, is force times rotation or radius sorry it's this distance here now one thing that's important is then the radius and the force must be right angled from each other so you can see here i've got a radius here of this metal bar and then i've got a force being pushed downwards or pulled downwards by the person and these are right angles it's really important that those are right angles because it's not torque if they're at another angle. If you've got a pivot and you're pushing into that pivot with a force, that's not going to produce a torque. A torque is caused by a turning motion. Now you might say, but yeah, what if I do it at an angle? If you did it at an angle, you'd have to resolve it to make it 90 degrees. What are the units of torque? Newton meters, not Newton's per meter, Newton meters, so NM, because Radius is measured in meters. Radius is just like a distance. Uh, ignore this bottom part because I'm about to talk about that in the next slide. But yeah, uh, but th those are the basics of the idea of torque. So torque is a rotational force. It's the amount of force, the amount of twist, it's like a twisting force. That's the best way that I think to describe it. Um, yeah, hold on a second. I'm just going to do, I'm actually going to fix this up. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to do that. Not that you guys really, it matters really, but yeah. Um, so that, that's the basics of talk. I mean, like, I'm not sure what else to add to this, but yeah. Obviously, if you take talk, well, not obvious, but you can take talk. You can divide it by force to find out the radius. You can take um, the same force and apply it at a different radius, and that will give you a. You can take the same force, apply it at a different radius, and it'll give you a different torque. So what that means is, is that if I had a, let's just say you've got a door, and this is the classic example. Well, not a classic example. Yeah, let's say you've got a door that you're trying to open. 
You can open that door by applying a force at the edge of the door, or you can apply a force in the middle of the door. This force one is going to have a larger is going to have a larger torque because it's got a larger radius than force two, even though the forces might be the same. Even though the force is the same, the torques will change depending on their radius. And it's kind of like you might be able to think of that as um, hanging, uh, pulling a ruler off the table. The further you pull that ruler off the table, the more likely the ruler is to fall off the table. So these are the basics of torque. Let's talk about uh, direction. Because as I said, torque is a vector. Now, because torque is a vector, you need to give a direction. Now, radius and forces are vectors too. So the product is a complex vector vector multiplication thing that we're not going to deal with. I'm like, if you guys were specialist math students, sure, we could talk about cross products, but we're not going to because, you know, it's just not worth it. So we're just going to ignore that and we're just going to simplify the vector's direction as being this. If force is clockwise and torque is goes into the page, it is considered positive. Now, when I say into the page, I mean, if you grab a look at this picture on the right here, you can see when it's going, um, not this way, when it's going clockwise, it's going down into that page. So if I've got this situation in that page in this slide before, where you have a wrench that's being pulled downwards, the torque is going to go clockwise into that page, into the slide. Obviously, I can't draw that because I can't draw in three dimensions. Now, the opposite is true. If the torque is going the other way, if it's going anti-clockwise, then it will come out of the page. Again, can't draw that because we haven't got, I can't draw it in three dimensions, but essentially it would come out of the page. And that's how you talk about direction. Sometimes they just refer to it as positive and negative torque. Uh, clockwise being positive, anti-clockwise being, being negative. And it was really annoying when I found out that the two textbooks that I've been using to teach you guys have different opinions. So that's why I've said both of the opinions here. Just so that you've got them, positive torque means clockwise, negative torque means anti-clockwise, and into and out of the page. Now, if you ever do like more things with vectors, you guys will learn how to multiply two vectors properly and then that would tell you why it comes out of the page and into the page, but we're not going to teach that. We're just going to teach these basic rules here. Now, so now we've got those two rules, we can talk about a torque. We know the units of torque, we know the equation for torque, we now know the direction of torque. That's pretty much all we need to know with regards to torque, at least today. So that means, well, let's talk a little bit more general about why we use torque. And then we're going to wrap up the end of the lesson with a little example. So I need to work on this slide. I was working on this slide over lunch. This is why I didn't get to finish my lunch. But yeah, I need to work on this slide because there's a lot more information that needs to be put here and it needs to be summarized in a bit of a better way. But let's start, let's talk about torque as it's used. How is it used? Torque is used a lot when comparing different engines and different motors. So when you like, when you talk about like, when you look at someone that's got a dirt bike or they've got a new um, four wheel drive, they'll talk about maybe how much torque that engine can produce. And what that means is it's talking about, well, how much force over that radius can it get? And the reason that they do that is because ultimately, Engines have a crankshaft, which is, if you don't know, I, I don't expect you guys to know what a crankshaft is, but if that's the thing that does the spinning, that allows the wheels of a car to move. And because it, it does it over a force, over a certain amount of diameter. Why is torque used? Why is it so good? Torque is good at estimating how much mass a vehicle can pull, or how much mass or force a motor can apply. And that's why we use torque a lot. 
So let's just say that I wanted to, um, if I had a whippersnipper that could snip the weeds off my, in my lawn, I want something which has got a high torque because I want something that can cut the grass really easily rather than having something with a low torque that might not be able to cut the grass as well. A reason I use four-wheel drives as my example here is because four-wheel drives usually have a, a lot of torque because the torque is means that they can, uh, they can pull a lot. Interestingly enough, you would think, you might think, oh man, if I have a lot of torque, then I'm gonna get a really, really fast car. Not necessarily, usually unlikely. If you have a high torque, that doesn't mean that you're going to, your car is gonna speed off. What it does mean, if you've got a high torque, it means that you can move a really, really heavy load. You can put a trailer on it. You can like drive over really steep hills and stuff like that. What you're thinking of, if you're thinking of, you want a fast car, is you want a high revolutions per minute, you want a high RPM, or what they refer to as something called power. You want to be able to quickly launch off and so cars that can go really, really fast are really are great, but they may not be able to pull as much. So it's like you're never going to be able you're never going to be able to move house using a Formula One car because that's not what it's for. It's not for pulling heavy things. It's just made to go fast. This is my basic understanding of how torque is used in. Um, in uh, industrial settings like this, but uh, I need to do a little bit more research on this page. But essentially, that's my basic understanding. Torque is used with how much effort can your little engine do? You're building like, and I've, because I've worked a lot with 3D printers, you don't necessarily need to have uh, motors that put a lot of torque because you're not dealing with heavy things. You just need motors that can move quickly. So therefore, torque is not really that important. But if you're looking at a crane, you would want to have something with a high amount of torque because you want something that can apply a large amount of force. Let's do one calculation and I'm done. So we're going to do a torque calculation. A bus driver applies a force of 45 newtons on the steering wheel of a bus as it, tur as it turns a right hand corner. So therefore they're turning right. So the force is going to be like this. The radius of the steering wheel is 30 centimeters. If the force applied at 90 degrees to the radius, calculate the torque. Well, torque equals force times radius. Our force is 45 newtons, and our radius is 0 0.3, because we're going to convert this into, um, into decimal. And again, we probably should have done this. We probably should have done F. 45 r equals 0 0.3 whatever so that means that our final answer is going to be 13.5 13.5 newton meters into the wheel some people would just say oh you can just write positive or positive 13.5. Both of those would have been fine. And we know because it's clockwise, clockwise means into, um, whereas anti-clockwise would mean out of. So that's how you do a basic torque calculation. You could do a torque. I could have shown you an example of one where you divide both sides by F or divide both sides by a radius to get the force, but you know, I just, I think this is a pretty good example here. Are there any questions on how I've done this example? All right, well, it's two o'clock. What I'd like you guys to do, and we're not gonna go any further with talk, on Monday, what I would like to do is I'd like to start exploring, well, what happens if you get more than one torque? What happens if, as this person is turning the steering wheel, 
the friction of the road starts to apply a force in the opposite direction on the wheel. What would that mean for the overall torque? Or like net force, we would say, what's that going to mean for the net torque? But we're not going to discuss that today. Today, what we're going, we just want to talk about what torque is, what's its units, where is it used, and what's its direction. And then give a quick example, and here's a quick example. I would like you to do a couple of your own examples by working on 10.8, questions one to four. There are only questions one to four of 10.8. It should not take you that long to do. What's more is you've got 20 minutes to do it in class. Ladies and gents, I'm going to stay on this Zoom call for the next 20 minutes. So if you guys have got any additional questions that you would like to ask, then um, you can ask those questions in the next 20 minutes. If you've got any queries, any issues, someone sent me a 